Hello children, I'm pleased to see you again. Well, we'll start with our cross. You can see I'm in, in church, just in front of the altar, and you can see some of the lovely stained glass behind me. So I'm going to put the cross on the altar there, and I think you can still see that there, can't you? And then I'm going to light the candle. There you are, you can see that candle burning. And we remember what Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together, there he is, right in the middle of us. Put that on the altar by the cross. Uh -huh. See that as well. Now on Sunday, we're going to hear a story from Mark's Gospel. And I thought I'd tell you this story. And it's a story, now the proper name for it is The Transfiguration. That's quite a hard name, isn't it? But I'll explain to you what transfiguration means. Now if you want to find this story, you can find it in Matthew, Mark and Luke. But you can find it in Mark and Luke, chapter 9. So if you go to into the Gospels of Mark or Luke, chapter 9, there you'll find the story. Well, Jesus was with three of his disciples, Peter and James and John. Now, James and John were brothers. And Jesus said to Peter, James and John, I want to go somewhere quiet. I want to pray. Now, we know in the Bible, in the New Testament, we read a, a, quite a lot about Jesus going on his own to a quiet place to pray. And he often went up a hillside or even a mountain. And on this day, he took Peter, James and John with him. And he said, I want to go up the mountain called Mount Tabor, which is in Lower Galilee. Now, I don't know whether they would have been very keen on going because nowadays a lot of tourists go, but there's a path being made, a road being made. You can still go up the rough side, but you can go up more easily. But of course, in Jesus's time, it was quite rough to get up. It's not very high. It's over a mile and it was quite rough. So, you know, you'd have to climb and clamber. So they probably didn't really want to go. But Jesus said, no, it's important to me. I want to go right to the top. So we don't really know how long it would have taken them. But when they got to the top, Jesus separated from Peter, James and John. He went a little way away and he stood by himself and they sat down. And in fact, in Luke's gospel, it, it actually says that they sort of dozed off. They sat down and had a little rest. I, bet, I expect they were exhausted climbing up that hill because they'd been very busy beforehand. And then they just dozed for a few minutes and then they became aware of the most wonderful and amazing sight. They suddenly became aware of a brightness, a shining. And they looked towards where Jesus was and they moved a little bit closer to him and then they stopped because they were a little bit afraid. Because Jesus' face had changed. Now, it doesn't tell us how it had changed, but in some way it had changed, and it was glowing. And it says that Jesus' clothes were dazzling white. Actually uses those words, dazzling, or dazzling means, oh, 
you have to put your hands in front of your eyes. It's so bright. And it actually says that there's no way on earth anyone could make clothes as bright as that. There was a heavenly brightness to Jesus' clothes and they were shining. And they thought, what's happening? And as they watched, so they saw two people appear and start talking to Jesus. These were people who'd been long ago dead. They were the prophets Moses and Elijah. Both of them you can read about in the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible. And there they were, alive again, and talking to Jesus. And they were talking about what a wonderful, wonderful job he was doing in the world and was going to do when he was crucified and rose again. And the disciples stood there listening in amazement. And Peter thought, this is the most wonderful moment. I want to capture it. I don't want it to end. And he said to Jesus, shall I build some booths? Shall I build booths? Now, booths would be, sometimes if you've been on a walk, have you seen where someone very clever, you might have even done it yourself, has made with sticks and branches a shelter and you can go inside? Well, I've seen quite a few of those while I've been walking during this lockdown, particularly when I went to the Licky Hills. I saw quite a lot of booths and people had made them sort of, tent shape shelters and this is what Peter wanted to make he thought well let's stay here let's not go back down let's stay let's stay talking for always I want to hear what Elijah and Moses I never thought I would meet them but of course they couldn't stop there and quite suddenly they were all covered in a cloud and they were a bit afraid. What was this cloud that had completely enveloped them? It completely covered them all. And then there was a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. <gasps> well, it was the voice of God. And then... The cloud disappeared. And Peter and James and John, I should think they were shaking a bit because they just didn't know what, an, what had happened, this amazing, wonderful spiritual experience. And as they looked around, everything had gone back to normal again. Jesus' face was just as it always had been. His clothes were clean, but they weren't dazzling white. And the two people, Moses and Elijah, had disappeared. Well, they knew something amazing had happened. And it, we call it the transfiguration. Now, transfiguration means changed completely for the good. And what they had witnessed was Jesus changed he looked different. And do you know, it was a little glimpse of what was going to happen in the future when Jesus rose from the dead. Because soon we'll be going into Lent, which means that we're preparing for Easter again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story and I hope that you'll go and have a look for it because you know the first part's the Old Testament, the big part of the Bible, and then the New Testament, Matthew, Mark and Luke, and you will find the story that you could read yourself in chapter 9. Now let's say our school prayer. Let's pray. 
This is our school. Let peace dwell here. Let the room be full of contentment. Let love abide here. Love of one another, love of mankind, love of life itself and love of God. Let us remember that as many hands build a house, so many hearts make a school. Amen. You could say to your mums and dads, do you know what transfiguration means? And you could tell them that story, couldn't you? Now I'm going to blow out the candle. The wax has made a lovely pattern dripping down there. The blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with each one of you today and forevermore. Amen. Keep safe, be good, see you next time.